The following day, the teams agreed on a 5 versus 5 battle, and this was starting to look exciting. Pinning teammates against one another, wasn't this a harsh move from HQ? Kai and Hibiki went at it, and D decided to reveal his secret in hopes of destroying his opponents. My guy went crazy, and didn't care whether his enemies were dead or alive. Showing your true colors, eh? As he was about to strike Kai down, he took the time to kick him down and caused him to relive his traumatic past. That's when Kai got up and blocked his attack, but he fell short and started cursing the heavens. That's when his weapon unlocked, sparking another round of mayhem. Meanwhile, Kamachi was all beaten up outside while the battle inside was getting exciting. Their emotions were boosting their weapons, and what were once the riffraff now turned into a monstrous group. Yamato was doing well when he spotted the shorty walking towards them. The spoiled brat tried attacking him and was almost struck down had it not been for Yamato. Who gave up his key in order to save her? What just happened there? Elsewhere, the muscle fanatic was doing his poses and exhausted all his energy. Unfortunately, his muscles were bulletproof and the poor girl had her head blasted open. She forfeited her key and the battle was almost over. Only a single key was left and after a huge explosion, the muscle freak came to save the day. On the other hand, Kai and Hibiki were going all out and didn't hold back. Their battle was interrupted by the shorty who almost killed Kai. Komachi, however, was walking down memory lane, remembering the first time she met the Blue Keeper. This was a fond memory for her since she admired him and followed him everywhere. These two were super close, and her savior in blue armor came to save her. She told him to watch out, and the crazy lunatic used his divine artifact to flood the underground. He stood face to face with the shorty monster, and it seems XX was the one in disguise. The Blue Keeper did not hold back and decided to torture her before ending her life. Wait a minute, was this guy a sadist? He continued toying with her and asking her where the boss monster was. She refused to spill the beans, and this turned into a horrific show all of a sudden. I'll refrain from showing the scenes for the time being, but let me say this, XX really suffered and called upon the boss monster to help her. Out of nowhere, a lethal strike almost ended Blue Keeper, and it was D who feigned ignorance and tried talking him out of it. D stared him down and unleashed a sneaky surprise attack. XX looked on in awe as the Blue Keeper was on the defensive. However, his barrier activated, and this gave the Blue Keeper a chance to grab his artifact and unleash another tremendous strike. Fortunately, XX pushed him out of the way, but was caught by one of his attacks. D tried running away, but the attacks were following him everywhere he went. XX then threw a car at him and decided to give up. The Blue Keeper decided to show leniency and took them hostage. Even so, he didn't hesitate to toy around with them and treated them like trash. Hibiki tried defending her honor, but all to no avail. Soon enough, she led him to a secret door, way where the boss monster was hibernating. These two were acquainted, and XX apologized for leading the Blue Keeper down here. Even so, the boss monster was phased one bit, since he's grown a lot stronger after their last encounter. The Blue Keeper didn't hesitate to unleash his custom Kamehameha. However, the boss monster wasn't injured in the slightest, and continued to give birth to new monsters on the spot. He considered himself a deity, but the Blue Keeper had more tricks up his sleeves and did not let down. Despite his fervent attempt, there was an entire army he had to deal with alone and stood no chance against them. X warned D not to interfere and to trust in their master. She then proceeded to introduce him to her master, who instantly took a liking to him. He applauded D for his efforts and encouraged his plans for world domination. It's almost like these two were cut from the same cloth. For some inexplicable reason, D decided to stab the boss monster in the back, and this was unlike him to commit such an atrocity. Why did he kill the only thing who could have helped them destroy rangers? What is this? None of this is making sense. XX was about to kill him on the spot, while the Blue Keeper was culling the newborn without fail. However, the real body was somewhere else plotting its escape. But wait, the senior cadets showed up and this included Yumeko and Shun. Now this is the type of battle we were waiting for. Look at the visual effects and fluidity of the animation. Quite impressive, honestly. Meanwhile, the Blue Keeper was cleaning up the place and it seemed all but over. 
until XX jumped into the fray and succumbed to the will of the boss monster. She begged for help while Kai was being ushered out by his comrades who accepted their defeat. If only they knew the level of threat that awaited them, these guys were completely clueless of the boss monster that appeared. While it was causing chaos downstairs, these hopeless bunch were chatting casually up here. All of a sudden, an explosion caught the attention of Yamato who ran into the boss monster. Fortunately, Kai came to his aid and all of them teamed up to bring an end to this mythical bird monster. Do they even stand a chance against this monstrosity? Well, they sure had the numbers and the spirit to fight. To make matters worse, Fighter D showed up looking viscerally upset. Together, they launched at the Bird Freak with all their might and resolve. But despite their synchronized teamwork, the boss monster was unscathed and launched a counterattack, almost blowing their heads off. They kept on passing D's weapon around while the Bird Brain tried frying them into tiny nuggets. Their coordination was phenomenal, and before you knew it, they got close enough to land a critical strike. However, the boss monster used his clone to distract and pierce a hole through one of the cadets, thereby capturing the other as hostage. Meanwhile, Shun and the others were making remarkable progress and even healed each other's injuries. The boss monster was ready for the smoke, and while he charged up an attack, Shun unleashed one of his own, and their partner used the opportunity to gobble up all the energy. Does she possess the sin of gluttony or something? But take a look at the Pink Ranger's right hand. That guy was crazy powerful. Speak of the devil and she shall arrive, if it wasn't the Pink Ranger herself. She seemed more worried about Hibiki than the boss monster. Meanwhile, D tried negotiating with the boss monster, who wasn't taking no for an answer. Left with no option, he surrendered in the face of adversity and asked everyone to stand down. What was this guy even thinking? Kai asked Hibiki if he was sure, and then proceeded to drop his weapon as well. The boss monster mocked their efforts and blew a hole through the wall to escape. However, the effects of the earlier strike took effect, rendering the boss monster helpless. Yamato grabbed the tiny minion while the muscle head freak made a heroic entrance, crushing the other. His muscles were beyond conventional weapons, and while the monster was distracted with D's mimicry, Kai landed a lethal blow from behind. I told you their teamwork was phenomenal. Unfortunately, their teammate passed in their arms while D stormed off in anger. Elsewhere, a bunch of goons were preparing to ambush a bank transport and ended up nailing the jackpot this time around. Their luck quickly ran out when the Red Keeper made an appearance. He landed swiftly and dealt with them with finesse and technique. However, a dragon appeared summoning him elsewhere. The goons made it out alive and celebrated their survival. Can't really call that debacle a victory, can we? These guys are surely hopeless. Would you look at that, the cops actually caught them. And it seems their boss snitched on them to save his own tail. What a despicable and grotesque monster he turned out to be. It's true when they say wolf in sheep's clothing. After the man woke up, he found himself tied up and in Red Keeper's facility. It seems the Red Keeper had his eyes on him and took a liking to him. They both shared the same ideals, and this caused the Red Keeper to make him an offer he couldn't refuse. Wait a minute. Is this a flashback of the Blue Keeper's memory? I did not see that coming. That blended really well with the entire show. The Blue Keeper was resolved to end this once and for all and used his ultimate trump card to drown the boss monster. Why didn't he use this move from the get-go? Meanwhile, Kamachi woke up in the hospital surrounded by wimpy crybabies who were worried sick. This girl is surely strong, but things weren't over since D dropped down to face off against the Blue Keeper. We were then flashed back to the past, 13 years ago to be exact. As D woke up from his nap, the boss monsters confronted them about the upcoming battle and told them to annihilate the Dragon Keepers by any means necessary. A few months later, the Rangers dropped in and slayed their masters one at a time, leaving them vulnerable and afraid. They killed one of them to demonstrate how lethal their divine artifacts were, forcing them into submission against their will. As a couple of them were heading down to the surface, D was seen chatting with XX about invading their hideout. She called him a coward and left, while the rest were busy putting on a show inside the arena. Back in the present, D showed his true form to the Blue Keeper and declared his demise. The Blue Keeper was excited, since this was a great chance to exact vengeance for stealing the Red Artifact. However, 
He was completely exhausted and in pain after fighting the boss monsters, which gave D the perfect handicap to fight him one-on-one. -on -one. D tried keeping up a brave face, but the Blue Keeper unleashed hell upon him, giving it everything he had and digging deep to unlock his true potential. This fight was personal, and the Blue Keeper insisted the Water Deity was on his side. He then continued to bombard D with countless attacks, leaving him startled and bewildered. God damn, this man was crazy powerful. At this rate, D might as well throw in the towel and run for his life, because I don't see a way out of this mess. He was almost caught in the water trap, had it not been for his quick thinking. He then mimicking Blue Keeper's lackey and caught him lacking with a sucker punch. However, the barrier was still protecting him and made him practically invincible. With another explosion, D was on the ground and his weapon was out of energy. Despite the barrage of attacks he received, our boy was still unscathed and was throwing shade at the annoyed ranger. D charged at him with the intent to kill, and just at the last minute, someone struck the Blue Keeper with a gunshot. Oh wait, was XX and the boss monster still around? I bet you didn't see that coming. What a cheap tactic to use. Was this really the end for the Blue Keeper? I mean, he wasn't my favorite or anything, but he sure was an honorable warrior. His weapon lost energy and it was official. The Blue Keeper was finally dead. Just then, X used her body to grant the boss monster some energy. She claimed how fighters were supposed to be loyal servants of the masters. Meanwhile, the Red Ranger was fuming over the death of his comrade in arms. The rest of the cadets started looking for the culprit, but they were lost for words. After all they did, they felt as if it was nothing but a failure. Luckily, the shorty who fought against the boss monster was in the hospital trying to make a speedy recovery. I knew that guy wouldn't kick the bucket that easily. The gang went to the hospital to visit him and vowed to get revenge. Meanwhile, the news station were broadcasting the news of Blue Keeper's death. Yumeko met up with Shun to discuss matters and how things will change now that there is a vacant position within the Rangers. The Rangers had their usual banquet with one less member, and D went ahead to retrieve the divine artifact. Oh, season two is going to be a banger, I tell you. Well, that's all for this recap. We hope you enjoyed every bit of it and humbly ask that you leave a like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and stay safe.